Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about romance books where one of the main characters has never been kissed before. I love never been kissed romances. I, I do. I'm a sucker for them. I've always been a sucker for them because I was one of those kids that got their first kiss way later on in life. And so I always loved reading these books, loved them, ate them up. So I, I'm not ashamed to say that I love these books still to this day. I love how I also have like a mix in here because normally when you read a never been kissed romances, it's normally the heroine who's never been kissed, but I've got heroes in here that have never been kissed before. And I love them even more. Also, if you hear the dog chewing a bone, I apologize. Can't take away a bone from a dog, not happening. <laughs> One of the books that I adored this year that has the never been kissed trope where the guy has never been kissed before, it's Pestilence by Loretta Lasso. Mr. Pestilence himself, okay? Um, he's also an innocent hero, so take with that what you will. Pestilence has been cast down from wherever you want to call it. Um, I don't know who cast him down, but someone cast him down with his three other brothers to wreak havoc to make the apocalypse happen so his lifelong goal is to spread plague throughout the world and kill like all the humans then enters sarah she's been hearing about pestilences spread throughout uh her country and she's like not gonna happen i'm going to put myself out there to try and end his life so like this can stop so she ends up setting up a trap and basically burning him alive and killing him. And she thinks, oh my gosh, I finally killed him. It's fine, it's done, it's over with. She doesn't know that Pestilence can't die. She doesn't know that this man cannot die. So he basically regenerates and comes seeking out for her and has a second life goal. And that is to make Sarah miserable, to make her pay for what she did to him. He kidnaps her, it's a captive captive romance after that point and takes her around the whole world to spread his plague and she has to watch him while he murders the human race right in front of her. But then the more time they spend together, Pestilence becomes more and more human and Sarah cannot help but fall in love with this four horsemen man. It's enemies to lovers though. He literally like ties her to his horse and drags her for hours. Like she's literally laying on her back, like arms like tied to the horse and is dragging her for hours. Her back gets ripped up. She almost dies from infection. Like it's just one of the many ways that Pestilence almost kills her. Like he's like, you're gonna pay for what you did to me. I hate you. Like this is one of the top of top enemies to lovers romances for me because they are true enemies. <laughs> like I said before, Pestilence has never been kissed before. Um, He's basically put into his human form for the first time in this book. So he's an innocent hero. He's never been kissed before. And then again, Sarah's teaching him how to be more and more human the more time he spends with her. He he learns how to love kissing, okay? He loves kissing. I love Choosing Theo by Victoria Abilene, another one where the hero has never been kissed before. It's so sticking good. If you are scared to read alien romances because like the alien factor freaks you out, pick up this series because these aliens basically look like humans. They just have like tattoos or markings on their bodies. And that's it. That's the only like difference, like physically. Jade is a woman from Earth and she was abducted along with other human women. And they end up on this planet called Clucania. I think they were kidnapped for like an underground like experiment thing going on on the planet. Anyway, I think one of the ships ends up crashing like on the planet and Jade wakes up in the middle of the nowhere in the jungle on this planet. And the people on the planet end up finding her. The Clucanians find her um, that were not a part of the kidnappers and bring her to their city. On Clicania, there are more men than there are women and they have different marriage customs because there's so few women, uh, women like have to be married constantly. And in this society, they don't only stay married to like one man at a time, yes. So like a woman will get married for like a year or two or however long it takes her to have a baby. And then she'll basically end that relationship and go marry another man. Like that's the rules and customs for this planet. Like the women have no say in it essentially. So Jade goes to this planet where women are have to do this. And so she has to get married like right when she gets on the planet. 
and they have this kind of like bachelor like runway show <laughs> it's not a runway show but basically that's what i pictured as like guys walking in and out of the room for like women to look at to like be like i pick this man to be my husband basically and theo is our hero and he has been in many a ceremonies um but he's never been picked because these people on this planet revere perfection basically and he was heavily burned and scarred um, in a fire and so people think he's very ugly but when Jade sees him, like, she's like, that man is smoking. I guess I'll pick him. Um, and people are shocked. They're like, why would you choose this guy? He's not good looking. And she's like, are you blind? Like, he's so good looking. What are you talking about? So they have to get married. My dad has the weed eater out. I think he's right outside my window. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> they have to get married, okay? But Theo does not, like, believe that Jade chose him for like the right reasons. He's like, this woman has to be a spy. There's no way this beautiful, stunning woman would ever choose me. Jade is with him for the reasons though and is very put off by Theo being so grumpy grump, okay? And yeah, it's basically them trying to figure out their marriage and Jade learning about Kokanian customs and culture. Like I love this series. So if you wanna dip your toe into alien romance, I definitely recommend starting out with this series because it doesn't have the scary aliens that some people think are scary, you know? Theo and here has never been kissed before. And I loved this scene where like they kiss for the first time. Oh, ooh, I love that scene so much. And Jade like showing him how much she cares for him. Like whew, perfection. A novella that I have is Fall by Claire Kent. This is a sci-fi read technically. Everyone in this series is human, but they take place on different planets. So our heroine here is not good. It's in good standing with the human government and they end up kidnapping her and dumping her on this prehistoric planet where there's no way to get off. And the only inhabitants of the planet are these humans, but they are like cavemen. They speak like cavemen, they dress like cavemen. It's basically like she got put on a prehistoric planet. She ends up getting essentially adopted into, very reluctantly adopted into the, this tribe of cavemen. There's one particular man in that group that makes it kind of like known that he's there to protect her and care for her and that is Roan. He is so speaking sweet. Like what is it with, I've read two caveman romances in my life and I love them because they're always so sticking sweet. I love them. And that's all I want to say about this one because I don't want to spoil it but Roan in here has never heard about a kiss. His people don't kiss and when Lena teaches him how to kiss like he just wants more and more and more and more. <laughs> Another alien romance is Sohut's Protection by A.G. Wilde. This is one of my favorite alien romances because it also incorporates the survival trope. I love a good survival romance where the two characters have to work together in order to survive in a very dangerous environment. Leo was kidnapped from Earth like many of these alien romance books start out with and is abducted by some not so great guys and they bring her to their planet and she's in like a cage. Um, but the cage like ends up tipping over off of their transport truck into this jungle and she ends up escaping them and has been living in this jungle, I think for like a year on her own. Then Sohut lives on this planet and he is like an alien creature mercenary of sorts. So these bad aliens that kidnapped Cleo end up hiring Sohut and telling him like, there's this animal that we lost that lives in this jungle now, we can't find it. Can you track it down for us? So he does just that, but he is shocked when he tracks it down to realize that it's not an animal. Like it's a sentient woman. Like <laughs> she's not an animal. And he's like, this is so wrong. So he teams up with Cleo in order to escape the jungle and their very dangerous environment and the people that are trying to kidnap her. Another one where the hero has never been kissed before. Sohut has never been kissed. I believe his people don't kiss. So that's the one of the reasons why I love alien romances so much is because like, you get scenes like that in a lot of their books because a lot of the alien romances that I read, like some of the authors choose like for the characters who have not kissed before because their people don't kiss. Like I love how Cleo in here is introducing him to that. Again, another like amazing first kiss scene, like fantastic. Another novella, Alien Romance, <laughs> where the heroes never been kissed before is When She's Bold by Ruby Dixon. This is a short little novella that you can read that takes place on the planet Resident 3, which is a planet that Ruby Dixon's created in her many, many books, reviewers books. And Lucy is one of the human refugees on this planet and she owns a farm like many of the other human women do. She's been crushing hardcore on this guy named Rextar. He is, I wanna say like, he's called a custodian. Like that's their title on this planet, but they're not actually like, like our custodians. They're essentially guardians and policemen for human women. 
who feel like they could be in danger on the planet. So Lucy goes to their office, like their police office basically, every single day to like give them baked goods and baked treats. And she flirts with Rektar and trying to hint at him, like, I wanna go out with you, but everything's going right over his head. <laughs> Until one of his buddies like points it out to him, like pushes him and is like, uh, that woman's into you. And he's like, no way. Like Lucy could never, she is stunning. I am nothing, like no way, but she totally, is. I have to mention another Ruby Dixon one, obviously. Bad guy, <laughs> another hero who's never been kissed before. Cruelden the Ruiner is a barbarian gladiator and um, he is not very happy that he's been put in this cell. Okay, he's in a cell in a facility, he doesn't know where he is, but he's like absolutely furious that he's in this cell and has nowhere to go. So he's like constantly ripping up his bed and tearing the sink out of the wall and pulling apart the bed sheets like he is furious all the time mina is a human slave who lives in this facility and her job is to clean out these cells and so the aliens have these cuffs on their wrists and ankles that are magnetic like very heavily magnetic and it has them stick to the walls while someone comes in to like check on them or to clean their room that's what happens. Mina goes into Cruelden's cell while he's like stuck to the wall. She's like cleaning up this tiny little human woman, like glares up at this giant alien and is like, I'm sick of cleaning up after you. Like, stop. <laughs> and he is like in awe of her. He doesn't even try to get out of his cuffs. Like he tears stuff out of the wall now and like ruins stuff and makes a mess just so he can see Mina. So he purposefully makes messes just so she will come in his cell. There comes a point in here where the people are keeping him captive, like want him to cooperate with what they're trying to do with him. And he's like, I'll cooperate with you if you give me Mina. Put Mina in this cell with me. I'll do whatever you want. And so Mina is put in the cell with him. She's terrified at first, um, but they soon learn how to speak the same language and talk and fall for each other. I mean, it teaches him how to kiss, like, there's a lot also going on in here. There's some plot twists too that I was not expecting. I have more alien romances, okay? This is Artek by Honey Phillips. This is the first book in the Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. If you want sweet, low angst, short alien romances to pick up, like look no further. All these books take place on a ice planet, if you will, where it's constantly snowing. And there's this large ranch on the planet where like seven brother in arms, have bought it, brought the property. Um, and many miles away, there is a human village. And then one of these brothers decides to go kidnap a bunch of the human women from the neighboring village and bring them to his brothers to be wives. <laughs> like almost every single book in the series is about, except for book one. Book one is about Artek, who is like basically the leader of these brothers. And he goes into the village to buy some supplies at the general store. And there he meets the general store's daughter who works there. He is like a bumbling idiot when he meets her and he's just like, I think me and my brothers need like a woman touch on our ranch and I am obsessed with this woman. So why not ask her to marry me? He does just that. They don't really know each other, but the heroine just like, I don't want to be a general store's daughter for the rest of my life. So sure. I'll marry you. These are just short, quick, sweet reads that I had so much fun reading. I believe both of these characters have never been kissed before, which I also love when that's incorporated into romance books because I love when characters like experience new and first things together. For a historical, I have Highlander Most Wanted by Maya Banks. This is book number two in her Montgomery's and Armstrong series. So the second book to Never Seduce a Scott. I do believe you should read Never Seduce a Scott before you get to this one because our heroine in here was abused by the villain from book one and you don't really get to learn about what she's gone through unless you read book one. But she ends up escaping that horrible situation and this is her romance with one of the Montgomery brothers. And that's all I really want to say because I don't want to spoil anything. Like you have to read book one, honestly, before you read this one. Um, but the heroine in here was heavily abused in book one, like heavily abused. There is PTSD for SA. And so please be aware of that before you pick this up. And the heroine in here has never experienced like a true kiss with somebody that isn't abusive, you know what I mean? Because those do not count. Nope, they do not. So Bowen in here, is the hero and he's gonna try everything to make her real first kiss like 
everything and more. If you wanna read a historical novella, I have Meet Me at the Anvil by Kate Pryor. Diane is set to marry a man she doesn't really care for. Um, he's always like poked fun at her because of her fainting condition. She just faints and she doesn't know why I really related to her. Okay, I have a fainting condition. So I really related to her. And then the last straw happens when she faints during their wedding ceremony and he like totally makes fun of her. And she's like, that's it, I'm done. And then she becomes a runaway bride and the best man in the wedding joins her. <laughs> and they might have both been secretly pining after each other this whole time, which I love. And I believe again, both characters in here have never been kissed before, again love. And the last one that I would love to mention is a holiday read that you could pick up for the holiday season. This is Dear Monster Claws by Maeve Black. This is the grumpy sunshine romance between a Cupid and Santa Claus. But as you can see, Santa doesn't really look like Santa. He looks like the devil, if you will. Santa basically asks Cupid to give him help him get back his Christmas cheer and in exchange he'll give her love lessons because all she wants for Christmas this year is to fall in love. She helps other people fall in love but Cupids don't fall in love themselves but that's literally all she wants and she wants to experience all the things that come with loving somebody. If she helps him give him some Christmas cheer he will give her a love lesson. So there's this whole lesson about kissing and dying on a puddle on the floor dead like I loved that scene. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 recommendations with the never been kissed trope. I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, but I do have a previous recommendation video as well. So if you want even more recommendations and you haven't seen my previous rec video, I'll link that down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any kiss related emoji down below. The lip kiss, the yellow emoji face with the kissy, two people kissing. I don't care, give me a kissing. Anything with kissing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.